This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Richard Taney. Uh, got that right this time? Got it right. Um, the director and writer of Southside With You, um, which is, how was it described? It is sort of a, um, kind of a before midnight type story set in the real world uh, with the leads essentially being uh, I don't know what you want to call them, homages, uh, actual representations of Barack and Michelle Obama on one of their first sort of times together. Um, one of the things that I really want to start off with is just uh, from a like structural, practical approach to it, what is it like heading into a project like this when you know probably like 50% of people, regardless of the subject matter, are going to be like, I don't want to deal with that. Like, yeah. Well, I like mean, it's, it, I mean, it's, you think about all the political movies over the years, JFK, W, all these stuff. It, it's not necessarily inherently like a political movie. It is, is a relationship story. It is a right. sort of two individuals like discussing their like lives and inspirations and stuff like that. So it shouldn't be perceived that way, but I, I mean, I can't help but expect that there's going to be a <laughs> yeah. certain percentage of people who do. Yeah. I mean, I think if I was like a smart person, I probably would have considered that, I, <laughs> that idea. Maybe there's something to be said for fearlessness. Then, just, or... just, just blissful ignorance, yeah. I guess. I, but, but yeah, I, embarrassingly, it, it, it didn't really phase me. I was just kind of, I was kind of taken by uh, by the the relationship that that the president and the first lady have, and read about them, was reading about them, and and uh, you know as as soon as I got a sense of what that first date was like, the the notion of a of a day long movie and and just you know only interested in 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 a love story. Uh, and and kind of the spark of a, of a of a of a love, um, that was the movie. And and I and I just whatever you want to call it, ignorance, stupidity, naivete. I just didn't really think about the political political ramifications until kind of after we made it. It is. I mean, it's honestly dumb that this even would be something that comes into play because it's just like this is art, this is entertainment. Why people have to sort of take something that's sort of not? I mean, this is not JFK. This is not W. This is not meant to be like a political expose. This is not no. something like that at all. And yet, just because of the association, it automatically is going to get some right. And I, you know, that's kind of the fun of it too, though. You know. If you look at it in other ways, is uh, everyone brings their own relationship to the yeah, Obamas that's true. to the film, and that means you're going to get a, you know <laughs> yeah, m movies to begin with are subjective, right? Right. Yeah. But you get that added layer of of subtext. You're right. I mean, it probably is interesting when you talk to people after these films that it probably very dramatically sort of. I don't want to say skews, but affects their interpretations of things depending on how they feel about this to begin with, which maybe makes it more interesting as somebody, as a filmmaker, instead of having everyone parrot the same things to you, possibly. I don't know. I, don't know. I you know, I, I, I wish I could take credit for that that aspect of it. It's, it, but it just, it was more like, ooh, that that that'd be a sweet love story. Da 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 da, and then. You know, it, yeah, of course, but it's the president and the first lady, so there's going to be some ramifications. And just from a purely logistical standpoint, because I've never approached, you know, doing material about a living figure or an existing person, do you have to get licensing for that? Do you have to sort of reach out and say, like, we're going to do this as sort of a film to, I don't know, who you, White House, I don't know who you reach out for something like Or are you allowed to do it just because it's fictional enough? Or what exactly is it that enables you to do it so that somebody like Barack Obama, regardless of what like the material is, doesn't just come in and say like, no, you can't make that. Right, that right. Well, I think I think that the 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 laws are, are a little bit more favorable to you if you're if they're public figures. Okay. And 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 that and if they're, you know, people who kind of live their lives in the public eye. Um, and also if the things that you're writing about generally have been reported on, which they have, uh, the first date has been, and all of their biographical details that are accurate in the movie have been. So that stuff's out there. So the, 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 the area where you could potentially get in trouble is if you're using creative license to slander sure, or, yeah. or, 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 or anything that's litigious in nature and then you know then th anyone could sue you yeah. for anything uh -huh. so america that's yeah um 
How, like, imagine as getting, as you're imagine getting sued by the president. Yeah, you know, that'd be pretty good publicity for the film, I guess. You know, Terrible. that'd definitely get some <laughs> cachet. Um, as you're constructing this project, did you approach it more from like just purely an organic story of like this relationship between two people, or did you really have a clear sort of um, thought press of, of you know Barack and Michelle Obama's? you know, story or whatever as you construct it. How did you sort of approach this? Because it seems like you could basically, I mean, completely change the names and have it be a great film just without it being associated with Barack and Michelle Obama. Was it something that you sort of really spent a lot of time being like, okay, this is authentic to their unique story? Or was it something that you're like, this is a story that is just a good story to be told and I'll sort of lay on some additional layers for Barack and Michelle afterwards. No, it, it, well, first of all, thank you for saying that it could, could be, the names could be changed and yeah, it could also I be good. I, I appreciate that. Um, cause I think it has to stand on its own, but no, I didn't layer them on, you know, to, to, to some other characters. I mean, it, I really feel this story could only have been told with these characters, at least, um, basing them off of, of the, uh, president and the first lady, um, a lot of what they talk about is, um, you know, a, a lot of what they talk about is true to their lives and mm. to their, their backgrounds. Um, and I tried to understand what their worldviews might've been back, back then. Mm. Um, just you, 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 you there wasn't a stenographer on the date, so I couldn't go to any notes. But you, you look at what's there, and you and you try to extrapolate from there. So it, it really all does come out of the the research that I that I did into their lives, and I um, and then I think from from there you you kind of hope that you're telling just a, a universal story that that people are going to relate to. Well, I, I think that's one of the things that I, I actually did enjoy about it is that it wasn't so much like it was hammering home like. This is Barack and Michelle Obama. Like there wasn't like a scrawl at the bottom. Right. That was like, remember, this is Barack and Michelle Obama. <laughs> was that something that you really consciously sort of tried to avoid is just hammering home that point of like, oh, this is Barack and Michelle. Like you guys should remember they're, they're Barack and Michelle or something like that because it, it, it does stand on its own. And I think that is a really nice thing that I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, like every so often I'm like, oh yeah, it's Barack. Oh yeah, it's Michelle. It's not like I'm constantly there like, oh, I don't know if that's what Barack would say or something like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, that was kind of my philosophy in, in, in making the movie from the time I was writing it all the way to, I mean, even from the, I just the, the, the conception of the idea was, Hey, we're not going to do this big sweeping biopic about their lives that puts them into some kind of historical context. I just want to see this one moment in time, you know? So even from the very birth of it, it was, it was a much more minimalistic, kind of approach and, 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 and maybe, maybe approaching a naturalism or a realism or something. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, whether it was the casting, the writing, the design of the movie, the look of it, um, you know, the music, all of it was in service of just the, these two characters in this movie you know, uh, um, having a chemistry and relating to each other and f kind of falling in love. Um, and, and so much so that I really, I paid no attention to anything after 1989. So all my homework was just their lives leading up until, you know, which is smart that summer. I actually think a lot of the time the failure of films that try and cover too much is that there's just not enough material given to any one moment. So it's just sort of uh -huh. like, oh, okay, now we're five years later. Okay. like Yeah. Sometimes they can feel a little bit like a trailer, like a two hour yeah, trailer exactly. for yeah, somebody's yeah, yeah. life. And I, you know, I, some of them are great. I mean, um, I mean, a, a good biopic is, uh, is great. But then also on the other hand, you can, you can do something like Lincoln, like what Spielberg did with Lincoln. And it just takes that one, sliver of history, uh, just passing that amendment and, um, abolishing slavery, just what did he do in that time mm -hmm. to, to, to make it work? And, uh, and that can be really effective too. What was it like in terms of trying to create the authentic world of this film that you're trying to create for Brock and Michelle? I mean, obviously like, you know, you have the art exhibit and then you have, you know, a lot structured around do the right thing. What was it like to sort of try and sort of 
create a cohesive environment for all these events to sort of come together in a meaningful way where it didn't feel like you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna structure this so it's like, here's a point I'm gonna hit, here's a point I'm gonna hit, here's a point I'm gonna hit, and try and just like, you know, rattle it off that way. Yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to answer that I, other than it, it just, you, you know, you, 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 you start to feel your way through a story and you start to feel your way through the characters and, and hopefully at a certain point it clicks and they, they just start talking to each other. Um, themes start to emerge, um, ideas for scenes and, and I guess more to the point, like, like ideas for how to approach the scenes and how to mm -hmm. enter scenes and exit them. And, um, I don't, I don't know if that's really answering the question, but also we, we had very little money well, to that's, that's what I'm saying. build like, 1989. Which seemed very authentic. And that's why, I mean, this is, this is independent film. Like, yeah. like functionally, you're not going to have like $50 million to recreate 1989. So yeah. like being, even being able to do like, you know, the art exhibit and stuff like that, I was like, wow, this is, you know, this feels authentic. Well, we were lucky there because, um, there's a painter that I love named Ernie Barnes who, uh, to my knowledge was not a part of the exhibit that they went to see. I, couldn't find anything about the exhibit that they went to see, but I wanted them to be at an Ernie Barnes exhibit. <laughs> and luckily, um, uh, his, the Barnes estate was, uh, really supportive in, 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 cause I wrote the script around his art. <laughs> and so you just never know if they're going to go for it. And they're very protective as they should be about, about his work. Um, so we, we, we did a combination of, uh, Mr. Barnes's work and, uh, and other, uh, more contemporary, African-American artists. It just seems like smart filmmaking to me, you know, making it work around what resources you know and can take advantage of. At yeah. The same time. So, um, Thank you. Obviously, one of the big parts of this is casting the leads. How challenging was it to find someone to, you know, represent Barack and Michelle Obama? Because obviously, there probably would be a fair amount of scrutiny on that, regardless of what people's expectations going into the film were. Yeah, I mean Tika uh, was was uh, early on. She she read the the outline that I had written for the the script mm. and uh, wanted to meet. And we met and um, we uh, got the two minute signal. <laughs> um, we met and I was just really impressed by her. She she wanted to help get the movie made, even if she didn't get cast as wow. as Michelle. And uh, I was just really kind of blown away by by her. And I, I thought after that meeting, she'd, she'd be a great Michelle. So I went off and I wrote the script. And then afterwards, we kind of teamed up to produce it and get it made. Very cool. So that was that. And then with Parker, he came in as a taped audition. And uh, like a lot of the guys that we were reading, he, he sort of couldn't get the president out of his mind. He was doing a, a really good presidential impersonation, but it wasn't what I needed. And, and so I called him, I told him that, uh, he should get the president out of his head and just, just, he's a guy trying to get a girl. A new tape came in the next day and he really found a way to implement awesome. the note. And it was kind of the performance that you see in the movie already, you Very know? Cool. I mean, both of them do a phenomenal job, so it's definitely whatever worked out. You know, yeah. It worked yeah. out in the end. Yeah. Um, so the film is Southside with you. Uh, what is the best place for people to find out about it if they want to see it? Is there a release plan or anything that people can sort of put on their calendars? Yeah, to so they can see the it? movie opens nationwide in theaters August 26th. Okay, great. Um, and uh, it'll definitely be at a theater near you. Um, and you can go to southsidewithyou.com. You can go to Southside underscore movie, uh, at Southside underscore movie for Twitter. There's a Facebook page if you type it into the search. So it's all over. All those important yeah. So yeah. Yeah. For me. The trailer's up. Check out the trailer. It's on Which is Apple. always a good thing for an independent yeah. film. Why more independent films don't have trailers blows my mind. Because it's one of the things that, like, as somebody who tries to advocate that to uh, other friends and stuff like that, it's so much easier if you're like, just watch the trailers. Yeah. You're like, I assure you, this film that you can read, like, a two-line synopsis of is good. So yep. that definitely helps. So yeah, it's at, uh, it's at southsidewithyou.com or apple.com slash trailers and just search for Southside with you. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I wish you the best of luck with Thanks, the film, man. Richard, and I can't wait to see 
more people seeing it finally. Very much appreciate that. So thank, thank you. you. T-1000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.